Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about solving problems with systems of linear equations, uh, but specifically this time we're going to do it with, um, with the word problems. So basically this is going to combine the last two lessons we did, right? Because last lesson we talked about solving systems of equations. So if you haven't uh, watched the last lesson, make sure to watch that before this one. It's very important because uh, I, I will go over a little, a little bit again here. I will explain myself, but um, I explain in more detail then when it's the first time you've heard of it. And then the uh, two times ago, there was only like a four minute lesson, really quick watch. Um, it was about basically turning um, expressions into actual equations, right? So turning an expression about, you know, three times the sum of four and five, right? Into how would we actually, um, you know, put that into an equation. So putting the words into the equations. And I think that's a key skill to have for word problems in general. So that's pretty important. So we're going to go through all of these questions. I know the uh, numbers will, are a little mixed up here. It says five and then there should be six, seven, eight, but there's eight questions here. And then the answers are at the bottom. And I'm going to go through the full solutions to each and every one of these questions today. All right, so let's start with question one. At a sale, all CDs are one price and all tapes are another price. Three CDs and two tapes cost $72. One CD and three tapes cost $52. What are the prices of one CD and one tape? Okay, so first of all, we need to define our variables. So how do we know what to define them as? Well, we know that what are we looking for? At the end of the day, we're looking for the price of one CD and the price of one tape. So we're going to let X represent, let, oh, there we go, let X represent the cost in dollars of one, actually let's do one CD first. And then let's let Y represent the cost of one tape. Good. <laughs> All right. So now we need to come up with two equations from the question. So the second sentence says, three CDs and two tapes cost $72. So what does that mean? That means that if we have three times the cost of one CD, right, it's going to give us the cost of three CDs, and then we add that to two times the cost of one tape, right, because we're buying two tapes, the total cost would be $72. Okay, so let's put that in here. <clears throat> that three times the cost of one CD plus two times the cost of one tape, right, y, is equal to $72. <clears throat> Good. So that's going to be equation one. I'm going to mark that one down as equation one. Now, what's equation two? The third sentence says one CD, so cost of just one CD, plus the cost of three tapes, so three y, cost 50 is going to cost $52 in total. So there's our second equation. Now we need to either use substitution or elimination to solve this. Uh, now we don't have any uh, variables that exactly line up, no variables with exactly the same coefficients. So we would have to, um, if we were going to use elimination, we'd have to alter one of the equations, but same with substitution because we don't have X equals blah, blah, blah or Y equals blah, blah, blah right? We just have the x's and y's on the same side, and then the, um, you know, just a constant on the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to alter equation two and make a third equation, and it's going to say x is equal to 52 minus 3y. So all I did is I altered equation two, and I used it to make equation three by subtracting 3y from both sides. Okay, so next I'm going to sub equation three. <coughs> into equation one. And this is where you want to be careful. Make sure you don't sub equation three back into two, because if you do that, you're just going to get something meaningless, right? You're just going to get zero equals zero in the end or something like that. And that's because 
equation two and three are essentially the same equation. They have nothing to do with the system of equations that involves one and two. Whereas since three is a variation on two, uh, we are able to use it in place of two back into equation one to solve this, right? But equation two and three are really the same equation, just one is a rearranged version of the other, right? So make sure in this case that you do sub it into number one because three is really just the same as two and we want to make sure we get the full system. Okay, so let's do that, sub three into one. So here we have three X. So equation one, it says three X plus two Y is 72. I'm gonna put three times 52 minus three Y, right? I'm replacing X with 52 minus three Y because according to equation three, that's what it equals anyway. X is the same thing as 52 minus 3y. Okay, and then we have plus 2y is equal to 72. So this new equation I wrote is the same as equation 1, except I traded in x for 52 minus 3y. That's, that's the only difference there. Okay, very good. Okay, now I'm going to solve. So 3 times 52 is 156 minus 9y plus 2y equals 72. So then we have negative 7y equals, let's see, 72 minus 156. Which is negative 84. And if we divide both sides by negative 7, we're going to get 12. So y is equal to 12. So awesome, we're most of the way there then. So that means that the cost of one tape is $12. Now, if the cost of one tape is $12, what's the cost of one CD? Well, let's sub y equals 12, which is our new finding, into equation 3. Now, at this point, since we already got one variable from the system, it actually doesn't matter at this point whether we sub this y equals 12 back into equation 1, 2, or 3. All of them should yield the same answer if we've done it correctly. And if we haven't done it correctly and we're getting different answers for different ones, then that's another problem. Okay, so let's sub it back into equation 3. x is equal to 52 minus 3y, so minus 3 times 12, which is 52 minus 36, which is 16. So therefore, the cost of one CD, well, cost of one CD is X, right? Which we said X was 16, so it's $16. And also therefore, the cost of one tape is $12. And if we go back to the page with the answers, that's exactly what the answer says, that it's $16 and $12 and in that order as well, which is good. Awesome. Okay, let's try a second example here. Um, it says a sports club charges an initiation fee and a monthly fee. At the end of five months, a member has paid a total of $170. At the end of 10 months, she has paid a total of $295. What is the initiation fee? Okay, so first let's understand what is an initiation fee in general. So basically, in order to become part of the sports club, you have to pay like a flat fee, uh, just a one-time fee, and then you're part of the club. And then after you've paid that fee and you're part of the club, to continue to be part of the club, you have to pay monthly in addition to that. So generally, you know, these sports clubs or golf clubs or things like that get pretty expensive because not only is it a one-time fee at the beginning, it's a one-time fee and a repetitive fee as well each month in order to become a member. And then also to stay a member for, for as long as possible, ideally. Okay, so let's see. At the end of the five months, a member had to pay uh, 170 and at the end of 10 months, they had to pay 295. And we want to know what is the initiation fee. So what is the fee? So what I'm gonna do is let's let X represent the number of months and let's let B represent 
the initiation fee, right? Because that those are our two unknowns here. Now, I recognize the question only asked about the initiation fee. They didn't actually ask us to say, to find out how many months there are, but the number of months is going to matter here, right? The number of months absolutely matters in terms of what our answer is. So even though they only asked for the initiation fee, number of months matters as well. Okay, so what do we know here? We know that at the end of five months, after 5x, or sorry, not number of months, sorry, the monthly fee, even though they didn't actually ask what is the monthly fee, we need to actually find that out too in order to find the initiation fee, they're related. Now let's say we find B first and we don't, and we just eliminate X or sub something in or things like that, then because the question's actually only asking for the initiation fee, we can stop there, we're good. But we do need to consider the monthly fee and it does need to be part of our equations in the first place in order for us to solve the question. So five months, right, times the monthly fee plus the initiation fee, which is B, is 170. Now, how did I get that? For the second, um, the second sentence in the uh, question says, at the end of five months, so after paying five monthly fees, right, five times X, five monthly fees, plus the initiation fee, which is B, we get 170. And then the next sentence says, at the end of 10 months, so after paying 10 times X or 10 monthly fees plus the initiation fee, that member has paid um, $295. What's the initiation fee or what's B? So here's the, here's the thing. We could, um, you know, we could say, oh, let's just worry about finding B and, you know, let's not worry about finding X. But these, the, the Bs actually line up really nicely to where we can just use elimination and subtract here and find X and then find B afterwards. So that's what I'm going to do. However, technically we don't actually need to find X because it didn't ask for X. They didn't ask what is the monthly fee and the initiation fee. They just asked the initiation fee. So that will be the final answer. But it will be helpful to know the monthly fee along the way. So I'm gonna subtract, do one minus two here. And I'm going to say 5x minus 10x is negative 5x. B minus B is 0B. So we can skip that. And then 170 minus 295 is negative 125. Now, if we solve even further, we'll get x is equal to negative 125 divided by negative 5, which is 25. So therefore, the monthly fee is $25. So if the monthly fee is $25, What's, what's B? What's the initiation fee? To find that, I'm going to sub X equals 25 back into one of these equations. Now, at this point, it doesn't matter which one it is. I'm going to choose number one because I think number one is a bit easier to do. It's just a little bit, it's a bit smaller. So 5 times X, which is 25, plus B is 170. So that means 125 plus B equals 170. And if we subtract 125 from both, we get 45. So B equals to 45, and there's our answer. So therefore, the initiation fee is $45, meaning to be a member of the club, you must pay $45 one time and then every month that you're part of the club, you must pay $25 as well. And that is the answer they got as well. They said the answer was $45, so that's good. Let's do example three next. It says a tennis club charges an annual fee and an hourly fee for court time. So to basically to be part of this tennis club or you know whatever it is, uh, you must pay annually to keep your membership. And then in addition, you must pay per hour that you use the court as well. Um, one year, one player played for 39 hours and paid $384. Another member played for 51 hours and paid $456. Determine the annual fee and the hourly fee. So in this case, we actually do have to find both variables. There's no getting out of it. 
So let's see, what are x and y going to be? Let's say, let's let, um, let's let x be the hourly fee. And then let's let b be the annual fee. Okay. Okay, because the annual fee you only pay once per year, right? Whereas the hourly rate you pay every single time you go to the court, assuming you play for at least one hour, or I'd imagine even if you play for half an hour, they, they might round you up to an hour and make you pay something, right? So, yeah. So let's, let's figure that out. It says one year, one player, one member paid for 39 hours, so they would have to pay the hourly rate of X 39 times. Plus, they would have to pay B, the annual rate, once because this was just one year. And that's going to add up to $384 with their playtime plus their annual fee. Another member played for 51 hours, meaning that they would have to pay the hourly rate 51 times. Plus, they'd have to pay the annual rate once. And that's going to add up to $456. So this is a very similar case to number two, where we where it would be really, really nice to just subtract these two. Now that said, we could use substitution here, but it's a lot faster and nicer to use elimination. Now I personally have a preference generally for substitution, but even I would use elimination here, um, regardless of whether I'm teaching this class or not. So let's use elimination, let's subtract. So what's 39X minus 51? That is going to be negative 12x. b minus b is going to be 0, which is why we're doing this in the first place, is to get rid of those terms. And then we have 384 minus 456, which is negative 72. And then we're going to divide both sides by negative 12, and we're going to get x is equal to 6. So there we go. Therefore, the hourly fee is $6 per hour, which, you know what, that seems pretty reasonable. That's a pretty good deal to me, especially, too, if, um, you know, the, um, the hourly fee can include, you know, it can include quite a bit in that, depending. So that's great. Okay, let's move on to uh, the, what's the annual fee then? Let's sub x equals 6 into, let's say this is equation one, equation two, let's do it back into one. So 39 times six, right? 39 hours times the $6 hourly rate plus B is equal to $384. So let's see, 39 times six is 234. So that means 234 plus B is equal to 384. which means B is 150. So therefore, the hourly fee is $6, and the annual fee, the fee you just pay once per year to be part of the club, is $150. So to really get your money's worth, it's good to go more, more hours, right? You pay a bit more, but uh, that annual fee goes to good use which is good. Okay, let's move on to example four. Example four says uh, three footballs and one soccer ball cost $155. Two footballs and three soccer balls cost uh, $220. Determine the cost of one football and of one soccer ball. Uh, so let's do that. Uh, let's let X represent the cost of one football and let's let y represent the cost of one soccer ball awesome okay so um, the first sentence says that three footballs, so three times the cost of one football, plus one soccer ball, so just one Y, would be equal to $155.
And then the second uh, sentence tells us that two footballs, so two times the cost of one football, uh, and three soccer balls, so plus three Y, is going to give us 220. So total cost is $220. So given those numbers, so given those numbers, what's the answer going to be here? Well, what we're going to do first is I'm actually going to switch around equation one and give us, you know, an alternate version of equation one and say that y is equal to 155 minus 3x. So I'm moving the, the 3x to the other side. And so this is going to be my new equation one. And then this is going to be equation two. And now I can actually sub equation one into equation two now that I've done that. Because it doesn't really look like there's an easy way to line this up. In fact, we'd have to uh, multiply the first equation by three in order to do elimination. And I feel this is a bit easier to just do substitution here. That said, if you prefer elimination, that will work as well. As long as you got the correct answer and you showed your work, that is the important part. Because, you know, at the end of the day, the higher and higher you go in math, the more different ways there are to do things, the more, you know, the different everybody's solutions look. And that's a positive thing, not a negative one. But I am going to show this way. If I was to show every single way of doing this, the day would never be over. So I will just show one solution for every question. Okay. So let's sub uh, one into two. So then we have two times x plus three times, instead of y, I'm going to sub it in for 155 minus 3x equals 220. And then let's solve that. So 2x plus, well, what's 3 times 155? That's 465. And then remember the distributive rule, right? Remember, we don't just multiply the 3 with 155. We also must multiply the 3 with negative 3x, which is going to give us negative 9x equals 220. If we collect like terms, we'll get negative 7x over here plus 465 equals 220. So then we'll have 220 minus 465 is negative 245. So negative 7x is negative 245. And then we'll divide by 7 on both sides and get x is equal to 35. So therefore, the cost of one football is $35. Now, what's the cost of a soccer ball? We're going to sub x equals 35 back into equation one. So y equals 155 minus three times 35. So let's see, three times 35 is 105. And so it would be, let's see, $50. So therefore, uh, there's not a lot of uh, space to write a conclusion, but if I was to write a conclusion, I would say, therefore, the cost of one football is $35, and the cost of one soccer ball is $50. Good. All right, and I think that's the answer they got as well. It is, and actually so was the last one. If I went on time thinking about it, I don't think I checked, but it was as well. Okay. Let's do, we did half of them. Actually, yeah, let's continue. Let's do a few more. I'll go a little bit quicker because we have already done a few examples. Um, number five says, for the school play, one adult ticket cost $5 and one student ticket cost $3. Twice as many student tickets as adult tickets were sold. The total um, receipts were $1,650. How much of each type of ticket were sold? So what they want to know is how many student tickets were sold and how many adult tickets were sold. So let's figure that out. Let's let X represent. Actually, let's start writing over here. Let's let X represent a student ticket. And let's let y represent an adult ticket. So the first sentence there says, 
the cost. It says that an adult ticket is $5 and a student ticket is $3. Twice as many student tickets as adult tickets were sold. So if we were to have the total amount of tickets sold, that's going to be, let's see, that means that two times the number of student tickets were sold as adult tickets. So that's important later. Then it says the total receipts were $1,650. Okay, so for this one, we know that an adult ticket cost $5, so $5 times the number of adult tickets plus $3 times the number of student tickets is going to be equal to $1,650, right? Because if we, you know, take the cost of all the adult tickets together, right, which is five times the cost of how, however many were sold, and we add that to all the student tickets that were sold cost, the cost, that, the total cost of those, we're going to get 1650 Now, we also know that twice as many student tickets were sold as adult tickets, which means that the student ticket number is equal to two times the number of adult tickets, right? So x is equal to 2y is equation two here. So therefore, what can we conclude from that? Well, we can sub one into two. And this is one where, again, elimination would work. But I feel that in this case, um, substitution is far easier. So definitely substitution is the way to go, I would say, for this problem. So let's sub equation one, or sorry, I, I mix it up. It should be equation two into equation one. So we have five y plus three times x. Well, x is the same as two y is 1,650, which means five y plus six y equals 1,650. That means 11 y equals 1,650. Okay. And that means y is equal to 150. And there we have it. So that means the number of adult tickets sold was 150. So therefore, how many student tickets were sold? Let's sub y equals 150 back into equation 2. Or it could be either one, but I'm just doing that because that'll be easier. Uh, x is going to be equal to 2 times y, which is equal to 300. So therefore, therefore, uh, 300 student tickets and 150 adult tickets were sold. And there we have it. Okay, let's do the next one. It says... When 20 bolts are placed in a box, their total mass is 340 grams. When there are 48 bolts in a box, the total mass is 600, uh, 760 grams. Determine the mass of the box and the mass of each bolt. So let's do that. Let's do that. Okay. So... Let's let x represent the mass of a box and let's let y represent the mass of a bolt. Okay? Okay. So the first sentence says, when 20 bolts are placed in a box, so that means there's going to be 20 Y, right? 20 bolts plus the mass of one box, so just one X, it totals 340. Then it says, when there's 48 bolts in the box, so 48 Y plus the box, that's going to equal 760 grams. And so the question is, how many, uh, you know, what's the mass of the bolts? And what's the max of the box, basically, is what we're wanting to know here. So let's do that. 
Let's use elimination to solve this, and let's solve by subtracting. So 20 minus 48y, uh, that would be negative 28y. x minus x is just 0, so we can skip that. And then 340 minus 760 is negative 420. Then we divide both sides by negative 28, and we get y is 15. So therefore, the mass of a bolt is 15 grams. And therefore, what is the mass of a box? Well, let's see. Let's sub y equals 15 into, let's say, equation 1. And I'll label the equations. So 20 times 15 plus x is equal to 340. So 20 times 15 is 300, plus x is equal to 340, which means x equals to 40. So therefore, the mass of the box is 40 grams, and the mass of a bolt is 15 grams. And there we have it. All right, just two more questions and then we'll be done for the day. I will try to keep this under 45 minutes, I promise. Although you're already watching this, so you already know whether or not I achieved that goal. Uh, hopefully I did, hopefully I did. Okay, the, a crate of 36 grapefruit has a total mass of four kilograms. When 12 grapefruit are removed, the total mass is three kilograms. Determine the mass of a, the crate and the mass of one grapefruit. So let's let, rep, uh, let X represent the mass of the crate. And let's let Y represent mass of a grapefruit. Awesome. Very good. Okay. So the first equation, the first sentence says a crate of 36 grapefruits has a total mass of four kilograms. So that's 36 times the mass of a grapefruit plus the crate, so plus X is going to be four. Then it says when 12 grapefruits are removed, so that means we would only have 24 grapefruits left, plus the crate is still left because it didn't say that the crate was removed, just 12 of the grapefruits are removed from the crate, then the mass is only three kilograms. Determine the mass of the crate and the mass of one grapefruit. So here we're going to use elimination to solve this. I'm gonna do one, equation one, subtract equation two. So I'm gonna end up with 36 minus 24, which is 12y. X minus X is just nothing. And then four minus three is one. So that means Y is going to be equal to 1 12th. So the mass of a grapefruit is 1 12th of a kilogram, which makes sense. You know, a grapefruit is just a fruit you can hold in your hand. It is not that heavy. A crate's probably a lot heavier than a grapefruit, I would imagine. Okay, so now let's do, let's sub y equals 1 12th into equation 2, let's say. So let's see, we have 24 times 1 over 12 plus x is equal to 3, which means 2 plus x equals 3, so x is 1. So therefore, the mass of the crate is 1 kilogram, is one kilogram, and the mass of a grapefruit is one twelfth of a kilogram. So there we go, awesome. Okay, let's move on to our very last one. Okay, yeah, we're gonna meet, reach our goal. 
we are not going to have this go past 45 minutes. That's, that's going to be good. It says the cost of renting a car depends on the number of days for which it is rented and the distance driven. The cost for one day and 240 kilometers is $39. The cost of three days and 800 kilometers is $125. What is the cost per day and the cost per kilometer? Okay, so let's do it. Um, so let's let X represent the cost per day. And let's let Y represent the cost per kilometer. Okay, so the first part says the cost for one day, so cost of X, one day, plus 240 times Y, right? 240 kilometers is $39. And then the cost for three days, so 3X plus 800 kilometers, 800 Y is $125. And the question is, what is the cost per day and the cost per kilometer? So, this one, actually, it's hard to say whether uh, substitution or elimination is the faster way. I'm going to go with substitution here, but elimination is perfectly valid as well if you are willing to multiply the first equation in full by 3 and then eliminate x. I think that's a, a good way to do it as well. I wouldn't try to find the, uh, least, the least common multiple of 240 and 800, though. That would just... It would work, but it just would be an ineffective way of, uh, of completing this. What I'm going to do, though, is something different. I'm going to do substitution. I'm going to actually change this first equation here to x is equal to 39 minus 240y. So that's going to be my new equation 1. And then here's my equation 2, this 3x plus 800y equals 125. And I'm going to sub 1. Let's do that. Let's sub 1 into 2. So here we have 3x, which is now 3 times 39 minus 240y plus 800y equals to 125. So 3 times 39 is 117 minus 3 times 240 is 720. plus 800y equals 125. Okay, so now let's do 125 minus 117. Let's bring the 117 on the other side. We get 8, and over here we get 80y. So then we get y is equal to 8 over 80, which is just 0.1. So therefore, the cost per kilometer is by looks of it it's 10 cents okay now what about the cost per day well let's do that uh, let's sub 0.1 into equation one so x equals 39 minus 240 times 0.1 And then we have 39, which is going to give us 15. So therefore, the cost per day is $15, and the cost per kilometer is 10 cents. So it's $15 for cost per day, and it's one, 10 cents for cost per per kilometer, which makes sense, right? I mean, they, you know, if they're charging too much for every single kilometer you drive, even a very short trip could be like 10 or 15 kilometers, then no one's going to rent this car. So yeah. All right. Well, that is it for uh, today's session. Good work today, everyone. Uh, next time we're going to be talking about the midpoint of a line segment. So I will see everyone for that day. Good work today and bye everyone.